on. Yeah. Wait. Uh huh. Just stay there. Don't go anywhere. No. Shush. Don't stay. Okay. So, greetings, ladies and, ladies and gents. We are group number one under supervision of our wonderful coach, Buddha. Okay. In this group, we have Griselda Rilla, Prince Paxson, Gian Cuenca, Alisa Ponsaran, Elia Ticato, and me, Ethan Maluba. Today, we are going to present to you tips and tricks and facts and even brief history about table tennis to ensure your victory. So, let's pass you around to my friends, shall we? actual mics today, not stuffed toys. It's honestly quite cute, but let's try to stick with actual stuffed toys right now to be consistent. So anyways, today we're going to be talking about the history of table tennis. So table tennis is played on a flat table divided into two equal courts by a net fixed across its width in the middle. The objective of the game is to hit the ball so that it bounces over the net and gets on the opponent's half of the table in such a way that the opponent cannot reach it or return it correctly. The earliest surviving action game of tennis on the table is a set made by David Foster, patented in England 1890, Parlor Table Games, which included table versions of lawn tennis, cricket, and football. The name ping pong, which we also know as table tennis, was invented by the English firm J. Jacques and Son at the end of 1800s, and later trademarked in the United States by Parker Brothers, the board game company. The game actually quickly caught on, and by 1901, tournaments were being conducted with over 300 participants. The Ping Pong Tennis Association was formed but was renamed as the Table Tennis Association in 1922. But the first World Championships was actually held in London from 1926 until 1939, wherein the game was dominated by players from Central Europe until 1950s, wherein Asia emerged as a breeding ground of champions. And from that time, the men's team event has been won over by either Japan or China, similarly with the women's event, though to a lesser extent. In 1980, the first World Cup was held, and Guayewa of China won the $12,500 first prize. Table tennis became an Olympic sport by 1988 with singles and doubles competition for men and women as we all know it today. So now that we're done with the history of table tennis, let's go on to the important terms that we need to know in table tennis. So I'm gonna pass this little stuff toy back to Ethan. Mate, there we go. Yeah, not so bad game after all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're back! My goodness. Grisel, can you pass it down slowly next time? Thank you. My goodness. Alright. What was I? Terms. Yes. So, table tennis terms to make you win. Good fact. First thing you have to know is that this game is a psychological game. You have to think and have to ensure that it's like chess. Next thing you have to know is umpires and referees. These are the people who observes and enforces the rules in the game. They make sure that you are not cheating or violating. Next is serve. The first shot done by the server. It begins with the ball being thrown up from from palm of the hand and struck by the racket. The receive, the return of a serve. Rally, the period when the ball is on play. The two opposing players are hitting the ball over the table. Six, smash, a put away shot. It is when your ball has enough speed and ensures that your opponent cannot make a return. So, another put away shot, point of that. Okay, the strike of a player will aim to win the point by using the maximum possible power that he has so that his opponent cannot have a chance on receiving the ball. A lob. a lob is a defensive stroke where the player lifts up the ball for a very high return, allowing the opponent to smash. This is a common defensive strategy. Drive, the basic topspin, 
shot executed close to the table, also called a counter, counter drive, or even so called smash. Top shot is when the opponent is far from the table, loving the ball back to you, and you try to block the ball gently to keep it as short as possible, making the opponent run in practically play the ball. So, those are some simple tips and terms for you guys. Now, Ethan, stop toy again, really? I just said that you might to be consistent. Oh well, I guess you really love stuff, Marisa. Oh well. Now moving on, let's talk about the equipment used in table tennis. So there are four main equipment in table tennis. The ball, the racket or the paddle, net and post, and of course, the table tennis table. So let's first talk about the ball. The ball that is used in the game is a 2.7 gram small celluloid ball that is usually colored white or orange. They come in a range of sizes from 38 millimeters to 54 millimeters in diameter. However, the 40 millimeter diameter ball is the one that is used mainly on international leagues and competitions as it is the one that is specified by the International Table Tennis Federation or ITTF. Now, the racket or the paddle. The racket is usually made of wood and rubber and is divided into two parts, the handle and the blade. But if we're gonna specify all the four parts of the racket or the paddle, we can see here that there is a handle, the rubber, the sponge, and the blade. Moving on is the net and post. The net, which is the last piece of important equipment, is usually brought together with the table or with the rackets, or it can be bought by itself. It should be 6 feet long and 6 inches wide. Also, it should have an upper white tape that is not more than 15 millimeters wide to allow the ball to move across the table accurately. Likewise, the bottom net should be close to the playing surface. Now we talk about the table tennis table. This unit is often regarded too as a ping pong table. This is a wooden or metal equipment in which the game is played. The ITTF specifies that the official table tennis tables that are used in the tournament must be 9 feet long, 5 feet wide, and must be placed 30 inches high from the ground. The table or playing surface is uniformly dark and matte. And it is divided into two halves by a net at 15.25 cm in height. Unlike other equipment, you can get this unit with different colors ranging from blue, black, green, among others. The surface must be smooth as to provide the lowest friction as possible. Singles game and doubles in table tennis. In the singles game, the ball can bounce anywhere on the table during service, while in doubles, the ball can only bounce on the right half portion of the table for both the server and the receiver. So I shall pass this mic over to our next speaker. Hello everyone, so today we will be talking about the different competition and tournament systems of table tennis. So as we all know, many table tennis organize competitions and tournaments for their members but what playing system should we use what system of play is best well it depends on a number of factors including whether you want to hold an individual tournament or a team tournament so let's take a look at some different competition and tournament systems of table tennis so there are two basic competition and tournament systems of table tennis that you can use for individual events there are the simple knockout system and the group or round driven system. Um, the first one is the knockout system. This system is used for all the major tournaments including the Olympic Games, World Championships, World Cup, and ITTF World Tour. So how it works. Players, first as players are allocated in pairs. 
second is, winners continue to play in successive rounds until only one player remains unbeaten. And lastly, losers are not out. And number two is the group around problem system. So how it works. Players are allocated into groups containing three, four, or five players. Each player plays every other player in their group. And lastly, the results of matches determine the final ranking order for the group. Okay. Hi guys, now let us talk about the basic rules in table tennis. Table tennis is a very simple game. It is played up to 11 points only with best of 5. Now I have 5 basic rules and it is very important rules to learn. Now first rule is enduring service. When serving, always toss the boy high so that, so that your opponent can see and the umpire can see. Toss it too low, it will be a fault and it will lose you a point. Second rule is always your service must always touch your side first before hitting your opponent's side. Third rule is you have two chances in serving. So when you start the game, that's your first serve, and when you win a point, it will be your serve again. After after that, your opponent will serve to you two times also. And the fourth rule is you should not let your service touch the net. This may cause you this may cause distraction to your opponent. So with that being said, it is called a left or fourth. When let is go, your service, you, know, you will do it over again. So that there will be no distraction to your opponent to turn your shot. This can be done many times in a single game, but it is strictly to avoid it. So the last rule is the rotation. It is important to know the rotation because when you're playing uh, table tennis, there's a difference in singles and there's a difference in doubles. In singles, it's very easy. Your ball, you can touch. The, you can your ball can touch the other side anywhere when you do the serve but in doubles always remember where your opponent is or who are you going to serve with so if your opponent is in the right side your service should be also in the right side so always remember that five basic rules okay The serve is one of the most important skills that a table tennis player should develop first. It is the only time of the game where you have absolute control over how and where you want the ball to go. The speed, height, and direction of the ball is completely up to you. The best players can also read their opponent's stance and serve in a way that immediately places your opponent at a disadvantage. Depending on your grip and playing style, there are various ways to deliver a serve. How to start? Step 1. Pre-serve. Remember to always hold the ball flat in the palm of your hand and above the table. This doesn't mean that you cannot deploy any form of deception. Many top players hide their racket behind their body or below the table as not to give away their intended serve. Step 2. Planning the serve. Plan your serve to exploit your strengths and your opponent's weaknesses. Against a pen hold grip, aim to their backhand side. Against a shake hand grip, aim again to the backhand side but closer to the player's body. If your opponent is too close to the table, try to hit further back to the table so that the ball will bounce up and comfortably close to his body. If your opponent is far from the table, short or slow, do a short serve. Beware, however, that a short serve is usually slower and thus allows a player to attack the ball quicker with great angles of return. Step 3. The Toss and Strike For beginners, employ a short toss-up. Enough to give yourself time to hit the ball and also that you're unlikely to miss. Allow the ball to drop and hit the ball with your racket. The ball should bounce on your side of the table before going over the net and bounce on your opponent's side of the table. Back to you, Gian.
Hello guys! So let's now talk about scoring in table tennis. Scoring in table tennis is very simple, especially in during singles. Because in singles, you only have you have the whole court to yourself, so you, your chances of winning is very high. But it's kind of tiring also. But how to score? It's easy. You just have to make a shot that your opponent will find it hard to return it back to you. In order for in order for you to do that, you must move, make your opponent move from left to right, from back, back and front, and always hit the hardest shot possible. Meaning, um, do make it more powerful, make it more hard to catch. That's how you're going to win the point. Very simple. You have just you have to do it for like eleven times to have eleven points. That's it. One point. You can all also learn that um, when your shot didn't hurt, didn't hit your opponent's score, it is considered outside. So always remember that. That's it. I got it! Okay, let's start. I'm gonna introduce you the do's and don'ts when playing table tennis. Okay, the first one on the do's. Grip loosely. Loose grip so you can move your hands easier and you can move strokes back and forth. And you can move your wrist gently avoiding a lot of stiffness that could happen. Uh, the next one is to make sure to have some space with the table. Do not go close to the table because, you know, it will get your space. And next, try to finish the spike with a forehand stroke on the front of your body to ensure that the goal is yours, not in the opponent's side. Move your feet close to the ball. So when the ball is going here, you move right here and right here like that. Okay, let's move to the don'ts. Do not hold the bat tightly. This will cause you to gain a lot of stiffness. You know what's stiff? You cannot move because your, your body is so stiff. It will be easier for your opponent to knock you down. And don't stand with your right foot further forward than your left foot, which means you should stand like this, like parallel, you know? Not like this, not like that, like, like this, yeah. This will have the uh, this this will give you more um, flexibility to move right, like that, left and right. And don't hit the ball too hard. You know that will be outside. When you hit too hard, move, go to the other side. Then you're done. And next one, the last one. Don't reach for the balls wide, wide your forehand. You know don't try to reach the ball when it's too, too far. You move by your butt. That's all you need to know with the do's and don'ts. Thank you for watching Aki TV. In conclusion, we hope that after going this video, uh, many of you have developed many different skills as well as improved previous skills. But most of all, we hope that you have developed an enjoyment that you can carry with you through the rest of your sports life. That's all. Thank you.